Hey, pen friends. Welcome back to Ginger Peachy Pens. My name is Sarah, and um, I am participating in this year's version of the eight pen questions tag um, that was started last year by uh, Simona of Simone and Leanne of Leanne Likes. Um, I did the video last year, and this year told them I wanted to participate again, and I was so late in it that, like, you know, it's been going for over a month at this point, and uh, I'm pretty far down the list, but um, it's still going strong. And so if you haven't seen Amanda of Lined Musings video from yesterday, be sure to go check that out and stay tuned tomorrow to see a video from Anita, um, Anita Anglin. And I will tag both of their videos or both of their channels down below so you can find those. Um, you can also use the hashtag 8 um, Pen Questions 2024 to find all the videos. And as well, there's a link in the description. Um, that has the full playlist of all the videos for the eight pen questions. So um, I am, you know, I'm excited to do this today. I did not go back and watch my video from last year. So I don't remember what I said. I, I mean, I have some idea, but um, I'm starting fresh this time. I just like I made the choice to not go back and watch it so that I could do a new video this time. So, um, so I do have a page here with my notes. And um, some of the questions I did not even write down an answer for. So I'm going to try to keep this pretty short and not too rambly. But question number one, when and how did your fountain pen journey begin? Some of you have heard this story many times, but I know some of you might be new to this channel. And um, so my I grew up with fountain pens um, in the vicinity of me. <laughs> That's not a good sentence, I know. But my dad used fountain pens while I was growing up. He was in the car business, and it was kind of before the days of everything being done on computers. And so he physically had to sit and, like, write out paperwork, contracts, you know, whatever for people buying cars. He was in the finance and insurance side of things. And um, he, I think his first Mont Blanc, he, like, earned it with points at his car dealership or something like that. But anyway, at this point, like in the late 80s, early 90s, my dad um, acquired a small collection of Mont Blanc fountain pens. And I think um, he would even say that he didn't really know of, you know, many other fountain pen brands. It was just Mont Blanc was kind of prestigious and it was the fancy pen. And so he kept a bottle of ink and um, a couple of bottles of ink and he would just use his pen. He His, his desk pen is a Mont Blanc uh, 149 Legrand. Is that what it's called? And, uh, he actually has the pen and it, um, he has a, a desk stand that like you can take off the cap of the pen and sit it to the side and screw the pen into the desk stand as the cap. And that's where his pen still lives to this day is on his desk at his current job. He's not in the car business anymore, but, um, is the same pen. And so, um, I actually have a, a pen interview with Papa Peachy, we called it, where my dad walks through his collection and shows off all his Mont Blanc pens. So, um, I'll try to remember to link that below, but, um, so yeah, I was not completely unfamiliar with fountain pens as a kid. Um, I also had a couple of those Schaefer calligraphy kits that were kind of popular. Um, I did not know how to clean those. So like, once the ink ran out and I didn't put a new cartridge in to just, you know, like I didn't really know what to do once the ink ran out. Like, cause I knew if you put another cartridge in, then the colors would mix together and I didn't know to go run water through them. So they're, you know, I guess they just got kind of crusty and I quit using them. And, um, so fast forward then to 2015, like January or so of 2015, and my boss at the time, and he and I were good friends, but, um, he, like, he knew I was a pen person. I was very into all kinds of gel pens, roller ball pens, ballpoint pens, markers of all kinds. And he walked in and handed me a Lamy Safari that was plain blue. It was just like royal blue and it had a fine nib on it and brown ink in it. And he said, here, try this. <laughs> And so, like, I wrote a few lines on a piece of paper and was like, what is this? And so he told me it was a Lamy Safari. And within, I think, 24 hours, sorry, I'm reaching, because within 24 hours or so, I had purchased my very own Lamy Safari 
um, in neon yellow and a bottle of, um, uh, here it is, Airbon Larmes de Cassis ink. I actually still have the bottle, but it's empty because I have since used it up and purchased a larger bottle. But um, this was my combination. I still actually really like that neon with that magenta purple color. Um, so that was my first fountain pen that I purchased that I like that got me into fountain pens. So I would say that's where my journey kind of began, although I was not fully unfamiliar with them before that. And, um, so yeah, this was it. And at this point, I don't, most of you know that I don't even use the Lamy Safari because I just can't get along with the grip. My fingers don't sit in the right places. And, um, but this one's never going anywhere because it was the first. So, um, so number two, my favorite inks in the beginning and what are your go-to inks now? So in the beginning, he, I pulled a few inks. Like I said, this was my first ink. Um, I still really like this ink. Um, these were some of my favorites, Waterman Inspired Blue. Um, I still love Waterman Inspired Blue. In fact, I've used up most of the bottle and still, which saying from 2015, almost nine years, but still, I mean, when you own a bunch of inks, to use up most of a bottle is, is, is a lot. This is still an ink that I really love. Noodler's Cactus Fruit Eel. Um, I got it as a sample from Goulet Pens way back when, and I just loved it immediately. I recently had to throw out my bottle because it had kind of gotten just old and sort of thick, but um, maybe I need to get some more of that at some point. And I loved Diamine Wild Strawberry. I would not say this is still a favorite, but um, you can't see that really well here, but it is a an orangey red strawberry color and it sheens like golden green. And I just thought that was the coolest thing, like that it sheened green to look like a strawberry. Um, and I will say I, in the beginning, like I just wanted to try everything, you know, like I was buying ink samples. I was trying all the ink samples, just learning what I liked. Um, I really liked sheen. I really wanted to like shimmer, but I was nervous about it because I feel like back in 2015, shimmer wasn't as prevalent as it is now. And it wasn't as good. You know, the inks were like, there was always the warning of like, oh, don't put shimmer inks in your favorite pens. And that's kind of gone away at this point. So, but I just wanted to try everything. And, um, now I would say that I've really kind of settled into, like, I know what I'm going to like, you know, I like jewel tones. Here's some of my favorites, but before I show you them, I'll just say, I like jewel tones, like darker inks, more saturated, um, no sheen or little to no sheen. There's, there's a few, um, exceptions, you know, to that, but little to no sheen, really no shimmer. I only have a couple of shimmer inks that I, that I use and I don't even use them regularly. I just keep them because I really like them, you know? Um, and I really like blue, green, purple, black, brown, magenta. I really don't lean towards like the reds, um, brighter colors, oranges. Like I just really don't use them much. Um, I would say my favorites kind of skew a little less fun these days. Um, or at least what I used to, what you used, used to would have thought was fun. That's not a good phrase, but you know what I mean? Um, I do use some like teals, pinks, and like a citrus green some these days. But, um, so here's on my favorites, Monteverde Gratitude. That's very similar to Noodler's Cactus Fruit Eel. It's in that same family with Larmes de Cassis. Like they, those kind of magentas are still a favorite. Diamine Deep Magenta is another one that's similar. Diamine Marine is one of my exceptions to like, it's sort of a brighter color, but in writing, it's not too, it's not really bright, bright. It's just, well, I don't know. I guess it is brighter. Um, but it's not a light ink. I guess that's what I should say. It's still a little more saturated and I don't know if it's going to show up. Like it's a little bit greener maybe than you're seeing it on camera. This might be an exception to like saturated because by you nightfall by poppy plume is a favorite. It is um, wet enough, but it is not super saturated. It's kind of a gray, gray blue. And I do really like that ink. 
I like browns. These are my two favorite browns, I would say. Someone just asked me the other day what my favorite browns were. And these were the two that came to mind. Smoky Quartz is not one that you can get very easily, but if you find it, snatch it up. It's one of the only three inks that I have a backup bottle of. Um, Olivine is another one that I have a backup bottle of. I love, love, love this dark green. It's just beautiful. Conpecky and Inspire Blue are two of the exceptions to my sheen, my um, distaste for sheen. Because when you write with them, I don't feel like your whole words end up sheen me, you know? Um, Inspire Blue, yeah, you do really see it a little more maybe. But I can get past it with these for whatever reason. I um, I no longer love, like, um, if you love sheen, you need to use Robert Osser. Is it Robert Osser? Yes. Fire and Ice. Because, like, the blue turns completely red. It's... It's really cool, but just not my favorite thing anymore. And uh, Murasaki Shikibu is one of my go-to, go-to purples. So um, I've said before, like, purple is not a favorite color, like, in my life. Like, I don't own a lot of purple clothes or, you know, decorations or things. But purple ink, for some reason, and magenta ink, like, is just, that's my jam. So <laughs> um, that's a few favorites. Um and then, like I said, a few more brights sometimes. Robert Oster Citrus is a great bright green. Colorverse Girls Just Wanna is a wonderful bright, bright, bright pink that I keep in my Esterbrook candy pen. Um, so there are some others. Uh, Diamine Aqua Lagoon is a great bright um, turquoise. So I think really my thing is that I like wet inks. I don't like inks to feel dry. I don't like to put an ink in a fine nib and not be able to see it well on the paper. Like, I'm just over that. I would rather just put a darker ink in a pen and not have to try it to see, am I going to be able to see this on the paper? So, all right. How have your ink and pen taste changed over time? Sorry, I have to move this so I can see it. Um, so... I kind of talked about inks a little bit that like I was tired of less usable inks. Um, I want to know that a pen's going to work and perform well before I put it into a pen. So um, I just don't reach for like brights um, or light inks anymore, though I love to see them sometimes in pictures and like, I don't know, I sometimes envy other people who like to use those. But um, as for pens, my tastes in some ways have not changed. I still love bright colors. You can see a few of them here. This is just kind of some eye candy. Um, I like all the color. I like all the um, shimmer and a pen. Um, I, you know, most of the time will not go for the boring black, or in my opinion, boring black or, you know, burgundy colored pens. I want something fun. Over time, I think I've just really learned what I like. In the beginning, I was trying all different kinds of things, which I still do like to try all kinds of things, but um, I would, I have learned so much that like, I don't like metal pens. I don't like metal grips, especially. I know kind of the size of grip that I like. You know, if a grip is too thin, I know that I'm not going to want to use the pen. Um, I know like what kind of nibs I like. I don't like flex nibs for daily writing. I don't like, um, even softer, like gold nibs that are not called soft. Like, I don't like that, like mushy feeling anymore. I like kind of a harder nail, they would call it, you know, nib. Um, I don't love a ton of feedback. So while like sailor gold nibs are harder, they're like, they call them a nail. I don't love the feedback all the time. I do have a couple of sailor pins that I like, and I sometimes will like the feedback, but I've just learned a lot about what I prefer. Um, I have learned that um, I don't buy pens sight unseen anymore. Like, I actually have a commission pen that's coming that I forgot that I commissioned back in November. But in general, I don't commission a pen anymore because I want to see the completed pen and see how the pattern is lying you know, is, is sitting on the material before I buy it. I mean, there's some pens like this one. Okay. This one has 
really beautiful color all throughout. But I could see where, you know, potentially if I just commissioned a pen made with this material, this is Turnt Pen Co. Midnight Orchid. Um, if it were more of certain colors and less of other colors, or if there wasn't enough pink in it or something, if this was the one that I had seen and said, ooh, yeah, I want to commission one like this, I can easily get disappointed when it arrives. And instead of having this, you know, beautiful pink and the orange, for example, it has a ton of white in it. And some people love that, like, um, you know, gamble to like, what what is mine going to look like? And I just, like, I had this with the SC Candy pins where the pictures were so gorgeous. And when my first one showed up, I was so disappointed because the colors weren't really defined and there wasn't enough pink and gold in mine. Like, I just was disappointed, you know, so... Like I said, I just generally don't buy handmade pen pens sight unseen anymore. Um, I still am the same. Um, one thing that hasn't changed is that I still love color. Like I love bright colors. I think I've said this already. Um, I have been through kind of a beach phase where I, I've got several pens right now that look like water. Um, like like you're at the, the edge of the water and I'm really enjoying those. Um I have delved a lot more into handmade pens in the last couple of years than I ever have. So that has been, that was kind of intimidating to me, I think, before. And um, that's been a really fun new journey. I don't know if I'm answering the, this question well, but in some ways my tastes have not changed. But in other ways, also one way that they have definitely changed is that in the beginning, I was all about medium and broad nibs and since then in the last three years two years I've gone back 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 to medium and then to fine and now I'm using extra fine nibs which I've never been into so um that's kind of completely new for me number four are there inks and pens you have yet to try but would like to as for inks um not really <laughs> not really like I have not gone online looking for new inks or like I have not put inks on my wish list in so long. I got really overwhelmed with just the number of inks out there. And like they were skewing so light and, um, you know, pastel and shimmery. And I just kind of stopped. Um, so I've kind of stopped pressuring myself to continually like try new inks and, and just have allowed myself to keep going back to favorites. So like... A good majority of my currently inked pens have one of these inks in them um, because I know I'm going to like it. I know it's going to perform well. I haven't bought ink samples or even ink bottles. Yeah. In months. I don't think I've bought any this year at all. I know I've received one or two from other people, but um, I have not bought a single ink this year. Um, and even last year, it probably goes back several months other than a few that I bought after the like ink rainbow tag. So, um, nope, no inks that I want to try. I'm, I'm pretty satisfied right now. Um, as for pens, I just like to try everything. Like I've been enjoying trying, you know, pens from all different makers and just seeing their quality and like how, you know, like a pen seems like it's just a pen, you know, but like to see the variation from like this is a rust pens pen made with a deli's plastics material and the shape of the grip is so interesting and the feel of the material and um i have have enjoyed uh my largest and my smallest pen the small one is new just from the other day you saw me um you may have seen me open this and ink it up but it's actually been more usable than i expected like i actually have written a good bit with this the last few days and it's been fine. It's just super cute. And then this like giant also from rust pens didn't plan that, um, fairy stick. I mean, how ridiculous is this, but it's wonderful. Like it's so comfortable to use. It's great. Like, so, um, what I would like to try is just to keep trying new things. Like, um, I don't know. I, I, I get excited to go to like, 
pen meetups once in a while. I don't get to go to very many, but like, and try other people's pens and see what they have. Because, you know, I don't really have a wish list of like things I need to try specifically. Um, but yeah, I just like to kind of try a little of everything and find out what is for me. Number five, what is my, um, Holy Grail pen? So currently, um, I would really love a beautiful pen from Lusso Atelier. Um, I will post a, a screenshot of a, an Instagram post or something here. Um, I, this is a dream and I don't know if I will ever <laughs> have the money for one thing and then also be quick enough on the draw to, uh, to acquire one of these in a color that I want, <laughs> but they are so beautiful. Um, I would also really like a Pilot Custom 823 in a really beautiful color. You know, I've got like just the standard colors and, um, I do have the eight, seven, 743, 723 in the verdigris color and it is beautiful and I do like it. Um, but I would love an 823 in like a super fun color. I know there was like a bright blue one that was what, maybe like a Bungu box special or something. Um, something like that. I don't know. Number six, how many pens do you currently own? Um, I own somewhere in the neighborhood of 150, I think. Um, I haven't updated my spreadsheet for a while, um, with like pens that I've sold. So uh, there's a bunch that I need to remove from my spreadsheet and it's going to drop the number a fair bit. Um, I need to do that soon. So yeah, somewhere in the neighborhood of 150. So number seven is, do you have a limit on pens or inks in your collection? Is it a number? Is it a feeling? When do you know that you have reached your maximum? Um, my limit of inks is where I am at now. <laughs> and it is a feeling more than a number. Um, I just have plenty. Like I don't see anything that is like new enough or different enough that makes me go, I need that also. So I just kind of reached a point, a feeling of overwhelm. And that's the same for pens. Like I'm at my limit. It's a feeling of overwhelm. I have too many. I can't use all of these. Um, you know, I, I, I don't do a rotation like some people do. That's just not my personality, but like I'm at my limit. It's gotta, it's gotta drop. And, uh, so that's been something I've kind of been working through some more. I have a few more pens to, put up for sale and I've just been kind of wrestling with like, where do I want to try to sell them and um, how much do I sell them for? And you know, those sorts of things. But yeah, for me, it's a feeling it's when I've reached this point of overwhelm, like I can't handle this collection anymore. So, um, and number eight, consequently, what would you do if another pen or ink came along? Um, so this year I have backed off on the pen purchasing a good little bit. Um, not completely. And I have not completely stuck to my, um, wish list, but it's not just been like willy nilly, you know, like it has been at some points in the past. So I'm not like if another pen or ink came along and I had the money and I, um, it was something different enough for my collection, then I would not hesitate to add it to my collection. Um, However, I am still in the process of trying to let go of more and more and more pens. So, um, at this point, my collection is smaller than it was three or four months ago. And even though I've added a few things to it. So, um, yeah, that's about it. I think, um, I hope that you're enjoying this series or this, um, this tag. Um, I, yeah, there's just so many great creators and I hope you find some new YouTuber, YouTubers that you enjoy through this tag. Um, and I want to thank Leanne and Simona for, um, organizing this. They put a lot of work into it. Like I got a super detailed email from Simona, um, about what I was, was to do with this and when I'm supposed to post it and all these things. So they're keeping it really organized. Um, so I appreciate you guys for that. Um, and I hope that, um, yeah, hope you guys have a great week and I will talk to you very soon. Bye.